I'm honored to have Jim Craig here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Jim? I'm doing great. Hi, Al. Jimmy, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Good. You know, it's always nice to hear saves that the saves. But I would tell people, as a goalie, every time you made a mistake, a big red light went on, and they put your mistake up on a scoreboard. So <laughs> it's, it's really nice to hear somebody say you made a save. Yeah. You know, it's great. Jim, do you uh, do you sometimes dream of this night? Of that night, do you sometimes uh, wake up the next morning and you had a dream that uh, you were back in the gold medal game or in the Miracle on Ice? You know what's so funny? Um, Al was kind enough. I, I'm, I'm writing a book called We Win. It's really a tribute to her. And, you know, you listen to Kenny Dryden, he's just so intelligent. Uh, I, I think dreaming is a huge part of um, being able to do something special. So I think all the dreaming of that was done before we played. And, um, not really dreaming of it afterwards, you know, and and, and I, I think it's it's so important that you know people do dream. So a lot of dreams, but not of playing goal anymore. Of course, I would like it with the new equipment, Al. It's pretty pretty nice. Right. You know, the stuff we have. <laughs> yeah. What was it like in the locker room before you went out on the ice uh, against the USSR, Jim? You, you know, for me, I, you know, I can speak for me a little bit first is. I thought that task was so overwhelming that um, what I, I did is I thought playing against the Russians for one period was equivalent to playing a game against someone else. <laughs> and so I mentally prepared, prepared to play four five-minute periods. And um, it, that wasn't overwhelming. And I think when you went in the locker room, Kenny said it so well, a goalie's job is to instill confidence, let people feel comfortable that they don't have to do your job, that they can, they can focus on their own. And I think everybody was really prepared and excited. And, you know, somebody always asked me, you know, we, you know, did you ever think of losing? And I don't think anybody that Herb Brooks recruited ever really thought of losing. They kind of always expected to win, and when they didn't, they figured out a way to the next time to win. So I hope that answers your question. What was it like uh, covering Herb Brooks, Al? What was it like when you were knocking on the coach's door to try and get some information or some emotions? Well, I, I was very lucky in the sense that Herb, I guess, was a little bit like Bill Belichick in a way, hmm. where he always kept everybody at arm's length, certainly the media, and the media bears no semblance then or bore no semblance then to what it does right now for starters. But there were people who wanted to, you know, get inside the team and have some access to the team. And Herb was very good at, you know, closing that door. But what was great for us was that Herb had so much respect for Ken Dryden. Yeah. So uh, so we had the kind of access to Herb that nobody else had because not only did Herb have respect for Ken, but I think he wanted Ken's feedback. Belichick is like that, too. Belichick will engage people, whether it's the media or whatever, who feels that you know they can give certain feedback. In other words, Belichick and Chris Collinsworth mm -hmm. have a very good rapport, and part of that is that Bill wants to hear Chris's feedback. He's obviously Chris is, is that good. So we had a little bit of that, and we were able to get together with Herb four or five times and have the kind of access to him that, that nobody else had. The one thing about Herb is, and you saw that, you know, we, we, we beat the Soviets, he just disappears. Uh, you don't see him, you know, at the medal ceremony. Uh, he, you know, he was a, he was so focused on being a hockey coach. What did he do the week after Lake Placid? He could have run for he could have been the, the king of America. Mm -hmm. He went to coach a club team in Davos, Switzerland. So for, for her, it was he, he never exulted in the moment the way he should have. I don't know whether it was personality or what, but he was a hockey coach. He did his job. On to the next thing. How about behind the scenes, Jim Craig? How about that with him? Well, I, I, I think Al's done a really good job. You know, Bell, Bill Belichick's a real good friend of mine, and, and, you know, I see so many similarities to Herb. And what, what Bill does and what Herb does is they have the ability to recruit the right person that they know wants to be better and that they can make better. And every way is a little bit different. And so when you look at Herb, I mean, 
and, 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 and Al, in doing this book and really looking into it, how much he studied on how to beat the Russians and the overspeed that they did. And I know that Ken Dryden, and because of the respect that Herb had and the thirst for knowledge, I mean, Herb always wanted to get better. And that's what my enjoyment with his was the same. Um, in 79, when I played the World Championships with Herb, I didn't even know what he looked like. So it wasn't like this, this was this was kind of like meant to be. And it, uh, I think Herb was just so good at figuring out a way to win and, and recruiting the right people to be on his team. To make it seem like if he could have worn a hoodie and cut off his sleeves, he would have done that behind the bench in Lake Placid. Well, I, I think it'd be more like Belichick wearing one of those uh, jackets. <laughs> the you know? uh, I, I think... You know, and I know Bill reveres our team and what we were able to accomplish. He has that photo in his office. And um, it's really interesting. When you make a commitment as a coach to make each and every player better every day and don't just identify who's good and who's bad, it's a different job. And, you know, I know with Herb, he always tried to figure out a way to win. And, and that's what this whole book is doing about it. Cardiac Jack, I don't know if you know who that is, Al, but that was his conditioning guru. Right. That one day he's on a, on a deck and he goes to him, you know, how are we going to beat the Russians? And Jack, who is a, a physicist, uh, said, well, you have to change everything you do. And then, you know, Herb didn't take anything lightly. So having Kenny Dryden there and have the ability to pick Kenny's brain, and, and I think a lot of things Herb wanted was reinforcement mm -hmm. on because his style and his way of doing things was so revolutionary. Yeah, I mean, it's so true, too. And, you know, I feel unbelievably lucky to have been the fly on the proverbial wall between, you know, sitting there and having four or five, you know, uh, sessions with Herb and Kenny. So, and it worked both ways too. We, we learned so much about our team that we wouldn't have known. And as Jim just said, you know, Herb had this tremendous thirst for knowledge. So he was, he was picking Ken's brain and very few guys are, are, are better at, at picking their brain than Ken, than Ken Dryden. Jim, I, I know that you were, before I let you go, um, that you were auctioning off a lot of your um, items from the gold medal uh, run uh, where where does that stand right now, Jim? Well, for, really, it was a process. What we really want to do is have the ability to be able to insure them, and you can't insure them until they're appraised. Mm -hmm. And and so it's really a process. So I still have the gold medal, the flag, and the two jerseys. The ancillary things that I thought fans would really like, mm -hmm. those went to people that will, you know, show them and have them in the house. My wife said, you know, the house is not going to be a shrine for me, so it's kind of easy to <laughs> do some other things. And, you know, we'll have things as Al does for his kids and grandkids. And, you know, uh, so it's just a process to, you know, do the right thing, be able to ensure stuff, and, and so we're in good shape. Well, Jim, I can't thank you for calling in with Al Michael sitting here. And, and you know, you and I, I don't think we've ever met, and I've never spoken to you, so I, I want to take the time to do this. Um, I'm going to get emotional. I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, as an 11-year-old an boy, you know, Al, when you said at the yeah. beginning of, the, of our segment, where were you? Where were okay? you? Okay. I was in my, in my house in Staten Island, New York, with my family, mm -hmm. and just watching you and your teammates, Jim, do what you did, and the way you did it, the way you handled your business, the way you were with your dad, mm -hmm. the way you draped that flag on your shoulders, the way that you and your, 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 your colleagues went about your business and did what you did. Thank you so much on behalf of anybody who feels even remotely like I do. Thank you. Well, you know, you know what's so special is Al is part of our team and our family. And, you know, a, a lot of announcers want to be the show. A lot of referees want to be the, you know, the center of focus. But what Al did and Ken, you know, it was almost like it was scripted. They were so good at letting the game come to them and 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 then reporting it with elegance and, and really knowledge. And they, they were they, they really worked really well together. And so the biggest joy that I get is the insight of when I do watch this game, and I've watched it with my son and my daughter and now my nieces and nephews and stuff like that. But it's the insight of what is going to happen versus repeating what happened that was makes, I think, that the call so special, Al. And, 
you know, I I, uh, I enjoy our friendship so much that anytime you need anything, it's just a phone call away. Likewise, buddy, and and you know, I'm it's, I'm just happy to be the team's mascot or whatever I am in, <laughs> in regard to that. Hey, happy anniversary, bud. Same enjoy. Year. Thanks. Best to the family. You, you too. Jim. Thanks, Jim. It's at Jim Craig USA. If you want to follow him on Twitter, the Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.